You did what? She's like, what? Max, why did you buy me something? <laughs> Jessica and welcome back to Love is Strange, Victoria's Root, and in the last episode we were just brave enough to ask Victoria to be our uh, project partner for the photo contest and obviously Victoria's kind of just like what the hell's wrong with Max, why is she partnering up with me? Obviously, because uh, if you played Life is Strange you know that they're considered enemies or whatever but you know, as, as time moved on through the game you could tell that she's being a little, she has a little thing for Max, that's kind of obvious. So. Now that we decided what we're where we're gonna shoot, as Max has decided where we're going to, is on the boardwalk. Uh, Victoria decided uh, we're gonna meet up early in the morning at the parking lot. So let's see how this goes. When I choose to work with Victoria, I didn't think it would mean that I had to work around my sleeping schedule. What I mean by that is that today at 8 a.m., I've been woken up by someone's insisting knocking on my door. When I finally managed to force myself up, I found a fully dressed Victoria Chase standing at my door. If I didn't feel dorky in my oversized Back to the Future t-shirt and hot dog shorts wh while I was in bed, I definitely did in the face of Victoria's designer cashmere sweater and glittery gold jewelry. Luckily for me, it seemed like the morning hours had dulled down Victoria's desire to taunt me. All she did was demand that I get dressed, and then I meet her in the parking lot. That's how I ended up back in Victoria's car too early in the morning, trying to will my empty stomach not to growl in her presence. Is it is it like if you if your stomach growls she gonna turn to a demon or something? <laughs> At the same time, I was kind of nervous as to where we are heading. Is this downtown? And then I was confused by the ending up downtown. So they are in downtown Arcadia. Should have known. Are you hungry? Victoria, for the first time the whole morning, suddenly questioned, shifting to gear into park and turning the engine off with his swift fingers. I found myself pausing for a moment, and she made this face at me and cleared her throat. Sorry, I'm a little sleepy. Aren't we all? Does that mean you're hungry or not? Um, can I say I'm hungry for you, Victoria? <laughs> okay, no, um, yeah, <laughs> sorry, I am. I don't know about Victoria, but I'm kind of starving. When she came to get me, I didn't even have enough time to grab a bite to eat. I also don't think she's eating either, but I'm not sure about that one. She might have gone to eat with her Vortex cl Club lackeys before coming to get me. Anyways, what's the worst she can say? I'm just being honest. Yeah, I'm pretty hungry. Good. I tilt my head in confusion at the statement, and Victoria glances at me and waves it at me off. Because I'm hungry too, Jesus, Max. <laughs> she's like, damn it, Max, why can't you uh, freaking be obvious? You know what I what I love about Max too? She's, she's a little bit oblivious. If you play the game, you know she's a little bit oblivious to stuff. Especially with um, Chloe. Uh, especially if you try to get them together, she's just like, does Chloe like me? And I'm like, she, you, you know, she, she likes you, like, come on, Max. Oh, my stomach betrays me just then, growling way too loudly. I feel my face going hot, all the way up to the tips of my ears. Victoria is still watching me, and then she actually has the audacity to smirk at me smugly. Tactful, Max. It sounds like you have a fucking monster in there. I groan and slide down my seat, or at least try to. The seatbelt kind of ruined the effect. Who knows when you would have woken up. I can't have you wasting time. The longer you sit there, the longer we go without food. Victoria opens the door, stepping outside. It prompts you to do the same, and when I do, I'm kind of awestruck by our location. It might sound lame, but I don't come to downtown often. There's something about this place that reminds me of a smaller version of Seattle, definitely less polished and less clustered. Still, it's a step off from the barren streets of Arcadia Bay, and it looks, it looks like Victoria's taking us to the nicer side of downtown. Why is there like a, you know, like a shoot 'em up area in, in downtown Arcadia? What the hell? Wowzers. Victoria hums appreciatively. What are we gonna do here? Do I seriously have to explain everything to you? I shoot Victoria a look, frowning again. No, you don't, but it'd be nice to know. I was thinking about our shoot, and this should be obvious. Victoria, as she walks and talks, seems to be skimming over each of the sh shops. I do the same, following her gaze as it runs over the glass windows. Oh man, everything looks so ritzy. We should make an actual effort to prepare. I don't want to be aimlessly pointing my camera around like a goddamn idiot, hoping to get the perfect shot. So I'm going to start by making sure you're not pathetically underprepared for this. What's that supposed to mean? I quirk my brow up, up at her. She gestures vaguely at my clothes with a wipe, with a swipe of her hand. That means I'm gonna get you into something presentable for once. Woo! Is she gonna like use Max as a model? 
You might like to parade around with that fashion sense of a five-year-old, but I can, but I could stand to see you in better clothes for a shoot. Whoa, Victoria, whoa, your choice of words here. Whoa, okay, I actually feel a little defensive about that. I like my jeans, and this is my favorite doe shirt. Hey, there's nothing wrong with jeans and a graphic tee. Not everyone can afford to drag out of the Gu Gucci shirt with their Vuitton jacket. Victoria makes a noise, followed by a short laugh. You did not just say that. Jesus, no wonder you're such a fashion wreck. I almost pouted her, and then kind of- and then it kind of clicks. Wait. You're going to- I'm going to be your model, Victoria? I'm going to be your model? Almost immediately after I said the words, I know they were totally stretch. I'm no model, and I know it. Victoria knows it, too. I'm not good enough to for something like that. Come on, Max, don't be like that. She could be a model if she wanted to. What? Victoria Pearson gaze landing on me again, and her brows are furred. No, Max, why the hell would... For some reason, Victoria seemed to catch herself before she finishes her sentence. You're just bound to show up in the shots. This isn't exactly going to be a modeling session. If you even bother to remember the prompt. If it was, you probably would have gone running to the fucking Rachel Amber. Whoa. <laughs> There's something particularly vicious in her tone. Because, you know, Victoria doesn't like Rachel. So, you know. Before I can say anything, though, this is it. Victoria steps in front of a particular shop, only before I'm able to get a good look at it. She's already heading inside. So I don't stand outside like a total dork or follow her inside with the grace of a newborn fawn. Instantly, I'm so surprised. I was expecting... I, I was expecting she'd bring me to some really glamorous shop, some place with all the glitter shirts and oppressive atmosphere. Oh, hello, Madam Victoria. Kiss, kiss. Pleasure to see you. Actually, just to take your huge wad of cash. I smiled lamely at the dorky thought. Unfortunately, the place looked totally normal. I'm actually starting to think I can afford this stuff. Until I took up one of the price tags of the shirt, and I honestly feel that my heart stopped. Whoa, I don't think. Oh god, don't give yourself a heart attack. Victoria comes over to me and just- and sweats my hand away from the nicely pressed shirt. I press my clammy hands against my jeans. Uh, Victoria, I seriously don't think I can, you know. And I'm telling you not to give yourself a heart attack. Chill out. Is she gonna pay for us? Is she gonna- is she gonna buy us things? Is girlfriend gonna buy us things? Is that what's happening right now? Victoria sighs, ignoring my minor panic, returning to the display table again. Do you like beige or white? What? I'm not doing a very good job at holding myself together, and Victoria frowns at me. She has to come to me again. Just to grab my wrist, guiding me over to the rack, and, and so heavily expecting she's touching us! <laughs> These, do you want to try them in beige or white? Oh my god, she's totally shopping for us! When I look again, she's holding a pair of white jeans and a pair of beige jeans. I hadn't realized she had let go of my hand. Uh, I, uh, I don't know. I really don't know a lot about fashion, you kind of said that yourself. Victoria smirks a little. I did, and I was right. Still, I like to pick something- Still, I thought you'd like to pick something for yourself. What do you think? I'm sure you can work with whatever awful opinion you choose. Whoa, Victoria, come on. <laughs> Thanks, Victoria, that's flattering. I feel really confident about my decision. Victoria hums softly and gestures to them again. I really have to pick something, huh? Can we pick white jeans? White jeans are pretty good, right? I, I have a pair of white jeans, they look pretty good. Deja, deja vu, oh my god. Okay, now I'm remembering it's from episode 4 when uh, the alternate uh, timeline and she's hanging out with Victoria. She's wearing the the white jeans and her like purple cardigan thingy. I think she has a striped shirt, right? I don't remember. I guess I'll just pick the white one. I don't even know what color- I didn't know that was a color jeans came in. Victoria turns to put the beige jeans back into the counter and I hear her snort. Jeans come in a lot of different colors. White isn't even the start of it. It's a good color though, you can really work with it. She's complimenting us! Oh my god! <laughs> Seriously, I wouldn't think so. It'll at least work on you, and that that's what we really need. Wow, thanks! Max is just like, did she just- is she being nice to me? <laughs> Victoria pauses and huffs. It was a genuine compliment. Hold on to this. Before she even finishes her sentence, she's already shoving the jeans into my arms. If you're going to- if you're going with white jeans, you look good with a white shirt. Not plain, though. Striped. You look fucking awful if you wore plain white on white. Victoria's walking through the aisles like a queen, and this is her palace. I wouldn't have thought about it before, except now that I see she's kind of amazing. <gasps> Max is having feelings for Victoria. <laughs> she really knows her stuff, and she seems to be passionate about this. It's actually nice to see her in her zone. 
To watch her the way she struts around the store, shifting through clothing with this kind of silent ferocity, lips set into a determined grimace. Do you ever take off that stupid hoodie? Victoria turns to me with a flick of her wrist and straightening up a little. No, not really. Of course not. I just needed to know so I can pick out a cardigan for you too. A cardigan? Yes, a cardigan. To throw over your shirt, your attire needs to splash of color, otherwise it won't catch anyone's eye. Crimson or violet? Violet. I respond with a, lo a lot less hesitation this time around. Victoria finally focuses on me again. She opens her mouth to say something, then stops. A whole other second passes, and then she promptly turns. Violet, of course. It looked better on you anyways. Crimson's too powerful. Too commanding. Victoria mutters underneath her breath, starting to, starting to head over to the counter. Wait. You're paying? Obviously. Wonderful observation, Max. <gasps> She's paying. Oh my gosh. But uh, yeah, I, I I feel bad too. Even though they're not they're not dating or not even friends. First of all, so it's just kind of weird. You know what I mean? If someone's just buying you clothes in an expensive store, there's no way you can actually let her do that. Don't seriously. You'll give me a headache if you want. You'll give me a headache if you want. You can just go wait outside. Victoria stares at her nails, tone firm, and I already know this is a battle I've lost. I'm kind of dizzy. She's paying for me. Even though I want to argue more, I decide it's probably best to take- I decide it's probably better to take her up on her offer. So I hand over the jeans to her, and I leave the store before I can cause a scene by arguing or something. S as soon as I'm out, though, I actually feel kind of worried. I feel like I should pay her back, even though if it's with something small. Maybe I can get her something from across the street. I've heard that they had a pretty sweet shop there. <gasps> We're gonna buy her a gift! Oh, this is kind of cute! I've got a- I've only got so long before she comes out, so I duck into a shop, and I'm totally stumped. What should I get for her? Ooh, sunglasses, ghost and shell figure, a box of cookies. <gasps> okay, if you guys remember in Life is Strange, I think it was episode maybe one or two, I don't know. Depending on if you took the picture of her when the paint spilled on her shirt. Ma Victoria breaks into her room, and Max received a box of cookies for her birthday from her, her mother, and they're missing. And when you go into Victoria's room, you see the box of cookies in there, so she stole the cookies. So, Victoria has a sweet tooth. Also, when you break into her room, you can see she has a figure, anime figure on her desk. So she, she's secretly a nerd, and, you know, um, sunglasses, because she's a fashion addict. Okay, in my opinion, I think we should get the ghost and shell figurine because I think she would really like that because she's secretly, she's totally secretly a nerd, so I, I kind of want to do that. But she might get mad at us because she'll be like, how the hell do you know this kind of stuff? Should I do it? Fuck it, I'm doing it. Yes, we're giving the figurine. I don't know a lot about anime. Really? I figured Max would know a lot about anime. No, that's probably Chloe, right? I think that's Chloe. <laughs> but I swear on one thing that I snuck into Victoria's room for Dana's sake that I saw some dorky figurine on her desk. I hope she likes this one. I run out of the store just in time to see Victoria exit. Jamming the gift into my bag, I cross the street to meet up with her again. I'm, I almost thought you bailed on me. You're kind of my ride home, Victoria. I can't exactly run and leave. Victoria irritated expression caves, and I breathe easy. My stomach also grumbles again, surprising us both. Instinctively, I blush again, and I find myself grinning sheepishly in her direction at the shocked little glance she's giving me. Not that I'm not having fun, but I'm totally ready to nosh on something. Where do you want to eat? Uh, wait, you want me to pick? Oops, that must have come up more shocked than I thought. Victoria's full of surprises today, so I can't help it. I wouldn't be asking you if I didn't. She scowls at me lightly, and she crosses her arms, the bag shifting on them. Just pick already, won't you? There's something about the way she says, and it leaves me feeling warm. <gasps> oh my god, oh my god. I rub my own arm nervously, leaning back on my heels. Well, I know this place down the block. They make some pretty cool crepes. Victoria presses her lips together and then nods slowly. Fine, whatever. Lead the way. For the first time in the morning, I do. Oh my god. It is getting so gay. <laughs> I don't know why I'm clapping right now. <laughs> By the time Victoria pulls into the black hole parking lot, it's already nighttime. Which means we spent pretty much the whole day together. That's actually pretty weird. I mean, it's not every day you get to hang out with the queen bee of Blackwell. With an absolute no problem or anything, I actually had a really nice time. Shopping with Victoria was still pretty grueling on my poor heart and my wallet, but aside from Victoria's gift, it's not like I bought anything pricey. Victoria made sure of that. Just thinking about it makes me feel a bit off, not in a bad way. Kind of in a really confused way, or really worried mostly for Victoria's health. She wouldn't normally shop for a beatdown hipster, would she? Max, she likes you, okay, let it go. But the more time I spend with her, the more I see she's not as terrible as she fronts. 
As she parks the car, I peer over at her. She's tapping her nails against the steering wheel, seeming a little distracted. Or maybe she's not really distracted, more like she's lost in her thoughts? Maybe she's thinking along the same lines as I am? For once, we might be on the same page. No, really, we might be, because now that I'm listening to whatever's coming out of the radio... Is that Sid Matters? You actually listen to them? Sid Matters is a good band, and it's on the official Life Strange soundtrack. I highly recommend them if you're into, like, hipster shit. Or, like, indie bands and stuff like that. They're really good. What? Victoria strains a little in her seat, glancing over at me, so she was distracted. Nothing. Just surprised you listen to that. Aren't they a little too hipster for you? I can't help but take an opportunity to tease her. It feels right, even if Victoria would probably tear me at any given second. Victoria stares at me, then huffs. Watch yourself, Max. I'm just saying, <laughs> I listen to it, and you know, I'm kind of a hipster. At least according to you and all your other Vortex Club fiends, you mean friends. Sure, Victoria. Victoria narrows her eyes. It's almost fun to rile Victoria up. She gets so super defensive, fishing for the best insults. Well, usually. Lately, I feel like she's been toning it down. Because she likes you, she tones it down for you. First of all, you're kind- you're not kind of a hipster, you are one. Don't compare me to a spectacle like you. Secondly, the door's open, you know. Feel free to get out, cause it's not like I'm keeping you trapped in here. That's true, but I can't really go yet. Not until I give her this present. I know, I just- I have a really good reason for not leaving yet. Unless you're kicking me out. Victoria first her brows and then turns to me, interested. I'm actually not. So, is that an invitation to stay? I rub the back of my neck. For some reason, the question makes me feel nervous. It's probably because I still have to give her the gift. I don't even know if she's going to actually like it. Victoria stares at me and rolls her head to the side. I guess. But before I have to deal with whatever nonsense you're going to come up with, Max, let me at least get a little comfortable. I don't entirely understand what she means by that until she leaves forward pressing down the same on some button on your car. Oh. I breathe out in half- Surprise exhale as the roof of Victoria's car literally starts to slide back, exposing the night sky to us along the gleaming along the gleam of the parking lot lights. I crane my neck to back to watch the rest of the convertible ceiling roll back, feeling stupid that I didn't notice it before. Of course Victoria would have something super fancy like this. It stops with a click and I blink a few times. Shaking my head, I look back to Victoria. I don't know when she's got them out, but now she's holding a carton of cigarettes, hand halfway down to pick at one. Don't smoke, kids. It's not good for you. Don't, don't smoke. You're, you're not cool. You're risking your health. Don't sound so surprised. Sorry, you just kind of caught me at guard. Victoria gives me a small laugh and half scoff. Most people are. All, all she does is light a cigarette, taking a long drag of it. Victoria reaches next to her and, oh, she's bringing the seat back just so she can lay down. She looks so comfortable, almost surprising, so, and I'm left wondering if I should do the same or not. If you're going to stay, don't sit there like a dork. She calls her a dork, not an idiot, that's kind of interesting. She gestures to the seat, and I carefully follow suit, my hand fumbling to find the lever and push the seat back. Before I can get comfortable, though, she clears her throat. And just make sure no one's coming or something. What, you can't be seen with me? She smirks. Maybe. I roll my eyes, but not exactly too offended. Leaning up on my elbows, I check for any familiar figures in the surrounding area. It's just us. I don't see anyone out there, not even the ones in the secu- not even one security guard, which is probably the best. I don't exactly need David grilling me about this. Even though I'm not entirely offended, it makes me wonder. Am I seriously that bad? I frown, rubbing my arm. I kind of feel like I haven't really been too on par with Victoria today. It hasn't been too terrible, but I definitely feel like I could be doing better. What? Victoria hesitates. Ugh, God, don't get like that on me. If it makes you feel better, you're shockingly not as terrible as those god-awful selfies you take. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> that doesn't make me feel any better. I groan quietly. Thanks. After I'm confident that no one is m milling around, I settle back down against the leather seat, flopping onto my back. The coast is totally clear. Victoria hums with approval. Since I've got nowhere to put my hands, I rest them both on my stomach, staring up blankly at the sky. So, are you going to let me in on whatever you're planning? I stiffen up slightly, bit my lip of a reminder gift in my bag. I wasn't expecting you to actually remember. Are you kidding me? My memory isn't that awful. I slide one of my hands over to my bag, shrugging weakly. Yeah, but my gift it probably is. The thought of it is kind of depressing, but Victoria is watching me warily, eyes darting down to the bag. Okay, it's not a bomb, is it? Very funny, Victoria. Victoria doesn't ease up at all. She's still watching me with still watching me intently. She even turns to face me, leaning on her elbows and everything. 
I, in spite of myself, I smile a little at the sight. So, spit it out already. I guess it's now or never, not that I really have a choice. Earlier, when we were shopping and you bought me that outfit? Immediately, Victoria looks a little peeved. Are you going to bring this up again? I already told you. Can you actually let me finish? I cut her up before she can get tell me to forget about it, and she narrows her eyes, taking a long drag of no f with no further comment. I got you something. You did what? She's like, what? Max, why did you buy me something? <laughs> Victoria seems a little lost up for words for just for a second. Even after I specifically told you you didn't have to worry about paying me back, all I can do is shrug my shoulders, fingering the straps on my bag anxiously. I just wanted to say thanks. I didn't really expect that. It was a really nice gesture, and it's not like I got you anything big, just a uh, little something. Victoria averts her gaze, covering her mouth with her hand. Alright, fine, what is it? It's now or never, Max. You can do this. It's just Victoria. I set up a little and reach into my camera bag. And I pull out the dorky figurine and I managed to f that I managed to find earlier, all neat and boxed up. I seriously have no clue where it's even from. But all I know is that the girl in the box looks pretty tough, wearing a leather jacket and holding some sort of pistol, I think? Looks pretty futuristic. Either way, I hand it over and Victoria's exp and Victoria's gone impressively silent. <gasps> oh my god, okay, here we go. She's gonna- I, I hope she doesn't get mad though. Victoria? That- where did you get that? There's an odd urg urgency in her tone and she takes it from my hand so quickly I jump a little. Uh, the store? I saw it and I thought you liked this kind of stuff, so... Wait, excuse me? You thought I liked this kind of stuff? Yeah? Oh no, she's gonna get mad! <gasps> I made a mistake! Oh fuck my life! Okay. Uh oh, I have a feeling I'm not supposed to know about this. Did Taylor, like, open her huge mouth or something? Victoria's question is turning the box around in her hand and, and I tensed up. Uh, I don't answer. Sorry, Taylor. I, s I sent the silent prayer to her. Before I can come up with anything, Victoria turns and crams the figurine into one of the plastic bags. W whatever. I guess I should thank you for the dorky thought anyway. Huh? Wait. Did she- did she like it? What happened? What- oh my god, did I fuck it up? Oh my god, please tell me I did not screw it up. I thought it was a nice gesture. Victoria, like, why you do this? Now that the weight of the whole situation is gone and Victoria hasn't kicked me out, I had the chance to press my head back against the leather seat of the car, closing my eyes and resting my hands back on my stomach. I don't hear Victoria move, but that's fine. All I can hear is smoking- all I can hear is smoking next to me and the radio blaring soft with another Sid Matters song. This is definitely how the album meant to be enjoyed. Score! It's only relaxing just sitting here in Victoria's car with the wind brushing over us. I know we're just at Blackwell, but it kind of feels like we're on our own little world. Just us and the music, laying down underneath the night sky. Oh, this is so romantic! Oh my god! Max! It's Victoria who breaks the silence. I don't actually mind- I don't actually mind it too much, really. I turn my head to the side, opening my eyes to look at her. She's on her back now, and one arm behind her head. Her other hand over her mouth, the cigarette tucked between her fingers and just about out, and I wonder if she's going to light another one. Did you- Victoria starts to say something, and I see her crease between her brows as it, ta as it tapers off into an illegible, illegible mutter. Huh? What was that? Victoria blows out a breath through her, through her mouth, all smoke. It's distracting. Never mind, it was something entirely stupid. All that does is make me even more concerned. Victoria usually doesn't censor herself, at least not to this openly. I bet it's not. It is. Tell Victoria it's not stupid. Come on, tell Max. Come on, Victoria. I say stupid things all the time. I think I'm winning because Victoria's lips for form an amused smile at the at the words. That's a good point. She shuts her eyes briefly, expressing expression falling again. Fine. There's a beat of silence and Victoria sits up briefly to throw her cigarette outside the pavement. Did you have a good time? Oh my gosh, she needs to know if the girlfriend is happy. Oh my god. Oddly enough, this is the last thing I expected from her. That's the crease between her brows again, and I could have easily mistaken it for concern. Or no, I think she's really concerned this time. I almost forget to respond. The idea making me with surpri the idea making me still with surprise. Huh? That's it? The muscles in Victoria's jaw stiffen and she shoots me annoyed glare. What do you mean that's it? N no, nothing bad. You were just kind of acting like you were like it was something worse. This time, I'm positive it's not the moon playing tricks on me. There's this flush on her cheeks. It might be from anger, but totally not positive. She's blushing! Oh my god! <laughs> I'm not totally positive about a lot of things, especially regarding Victoria. 
Can I ask, did you? Can I ask that? Is that weird? Did you, Victoria? I know it's not an answer to her question, but the first thing I think of, I'd really like to know, too. Victoria pursed her lips, running her hand through her bangs. Hanging out, you wasn't, hanging out with you wasn't as disastrously terrible as I thought it would be. That totally means yes. I smiled brightly this time, and Victoria's eyes widened a little. She quickly covers it up with a frown. Okay, but did you? I really did. I really had a good time, Victoria. I'm not surprised it's a shock, though. We didn't really used to get along, right? I have to stop myself for a second there. Didn't used to get along, does that mean we're really getting along now? And it really- And it was actually really fun to see you and your whole fashion thing. Victoria is watching me cautiously. Does she not believe me? After a second, I see some tension drain out of her bunched up muscles, shoulders falling back against the leather of the seat. Thanks, Max. I try. No problem. It's worth it, just to see how relaxed Victoria is. I couldn't imagine- I couldn't have imagined she'd be so worried over something so small. Victoria finally sits up, though, bringing down her mirror and brushing out her hair. We should probably get back inside before Wells finds us and starts bitching. Or even worse, Madsen. I laugh a I laugh a little at that, taking the initiative to pull myself up, too. David can be a pain in the ass, yeah. Victoria stops fixing, fixing herself in the tiny mirror. Do I want to know why you sound so familiar with him? Maybe not. It's a long story, or uh, a bunch of tiny ones. I can never resist getting into shenanigans with Chloe, after all. Victoria shakes her head. Weirdo. I don't want to hear about you and your weird escapades with, the other, with our security guard. Ugh, don't put it like that. Victoria flashes me another award-winning smirk and then picks up her purse. Hurry up already, I'd like to sleep at a, by a reasonable time tonight. Victoria is already way ahead of me, taking a hold of the bags behind us and leaving me to pick up whatever left over. After everything we've done today, I actually can't wait to get into bed, too. Woo, okay, wow. <laughs> as soon as I slip into my room, it's like whatever last bit of energy I had bleeds right out of me. All of a sudden, I can feel how exhausted I am, shoulders drooping a little. The first thing I do is put my camera bag over my head, dropping it next to my makeshift ni little nightstand next to my bed. I throw myself onto the bed right after, setting aside a plastic bag full of new clothes. I kick off my shoes, laying down a with a long sigh. The back of my head bumps against the wall, cr craning my neck to an awkward angle. Oof. Could you get any less comfortable, Max? Groaning a little, I'm about to slide down a little more when I reward it by the sight of a plastic bag resting innocently next to my knees. Without thinking, I sit up a little and reach into the bag, pulling it to my stomach. I seriously can't stress how thankful I am today, but knowing Victoria, she definitely doesn't want to hear any more of that. That doesn't mean I can't think about it, though. I don't think I ever got a real good look at them, between me having a heart attack and Victoria shooting me out of the store, but I know they're, they're nice. Victoria wouldn't leave me with anything less. I pull out a bundle of clothes, running my thumb over the rough de denim of the white jeans. Wow. I follow the stitch on them, but they're folded up. I can't really appreciate it, which is fine, I guess, because I'm next to burying my fingers into the softness of the cardigan. It's almost so delicate, I'm afraid I'm going to tear it. The color is real pretty, too. Super vibrant. I pull it closer to me, and I think I can smell some of Victoria's perfume on it. Oh, probably my just imagination, but when I pull it to my nose, all I can catch is the new clothing smell from the particular anywhere. Suddenly, my phone vibrates in my pocket, staring at me, startling me a little. Get get it together, Max. It's just your phone, dork. I drive the cardigan back down into my stomach and I dig into the back of my pocket to get my phone. At this time of night, it must be Chloe asking again if I'm alive. Could be Kate, but considering how late it is, I kind of doubt it. Then again, I'm not entirely convinced. It's Chloe, mostly because despite a few texts here and there, she actually hasn't been texting me as much as usual. <gasps> no, the ship! Price field! I wonder why, I, but I know if something's up, she'd tell me. Anyway, I unlock the phone to check Chloe's inevitable text, only to see it's not Chloe or Kate. And as cool as I thought it would be have Rachel text me, it's not her either. <gasps> it's not even Warren, it's Victoria! Oh my god! Who? It's not even Warren, who, with his track rather of blowing up my phone with perfect would be the perfect candidate. It's, are you awake? Oh, it's Victoria, holy shit. <laughs> By now, I should probably be, I should probably be getting used to all these surprises, but it's hard when Victoria keeps, keeps flinging more at me. I smile more than a little, I smile more than a little confused. It's kind of funny considering we just went our separate ways. That and the fact that she's literally one door away from me. And when she's the one who suggested we come back in, but she still wants to talk. Maybe she forgot to bring something up while we were in the parking lot. Fine, never mind. 
It looks like I t took so long to reply that she already sent me another text, and it makes me hurriedly tap my phone. I don't want her to think I'm ignoring her or anything. No, I'm not. I was just uber distracted. So nothing out of the ordinary then? Hey, please, I'm only telling the truth and you know it. I snort softly. Victoria has a way of coming off as a super catty even in text. And that's kind of impressive. Should I apologize or something? Oh, Victoria, please forgive me. Um, okay, no, gross, don't do that. <laughs> Victoria doesn't respond as quickly this time, and I spend a good minute staring at my phone before realizing how lame that is. I shouldn't be focused on texting Victoria anyways. As soon as I put my phone back on my chest, though, it vibrates again, and I hastily lift it back over my face. Weirdo. I wanted to ask if you bothered to hang up your new outfit up. Hang it up? Pretty much in that instant I sent the text, I catched on to how dumb the question was. I lift up the card again. It's just so I can groan against it. This is some designer stuff. Of course she wants want me to take care of it. Okay, so that's a no. It wrinkles, so you can't just sloppily throw it around like everything else you own. Sorry, I'm kind of new to the whole having fashionable clothing thing. Are you gonna give me more pointers or a wise one? Maybe. Would you take them? I was joking, but oddly enough, the question makes me squirm a little. I shake my head a little and nudge the cardigan off my nose. Would I? I was kidding, but after today, would that be so bad? Are you gonna give me- you know what? You know... Let's say yes. Victoria, I'm open to your pointers. That sounds a little bit weird. Sure. That doesn't include, like, entrance to the Vortex Club parties or anything. Don't push your luck. I'm having a hard time believing even my expertise would even get that far. Ouch. Still. That doesn't mean that we can- That doesn't mean we can give you a try to make something out of you. <laughs> anyway, that's not what this is about. It's not? I love how much emojis um, Max is using right now. <laughs> So you're telling me that you didn't message me just to have a nice conversation about my fashion sense? Partially. I raised both my brows, which way more cu curious than, I than before. As much as I really want to respond, my neck is also crumbing up from my position. Ugh. Push myself on my elbows and lean against the wall. I'm careful not to mess up any Polaroids plastered onto it, peeking behind me for a second before focusing on my phone again. What's this supposed to mean? I wanted to know if you tried it on what I bought you, since you obviously didn't get the chance to earlier. That just brings my attention back to the clothes that have fallen down to the little bundle on my lap. Victoria brings a pretty good point. I fought a bit and put down my phone to hold up the shirt up on front of my face. It doesn't look like there would be a problem, but what if it doesn't fit? Uh, I actually haven't. Ugh, groan. Of course you haven't. Hey, I was gonna wear them tomorrow anyways, so I didn't think I had to. My breath catches a little at her next text. I want you to. Oh my god, okay Victoria, hello there, she's going so forward. Just to like make sure not that I got the wrong size or anything. Right now? Is that a serious question? I laugh under my breath, resting my phone against my, f my leg for a second. Of course Victoria would respond like that. I bounce my knee slightly and the jeans go up with it. You can always try saying please. Ugh. Seriously? It's a suggestion. <laughs> the emojis. In your dreams. Aw, oh, it's worth a shot. You just love wasting time, don't you? Go ahead already. Rather than respond again, I just roll my head back against the wall and prepare myself to get up. I really seriously don't want to, or it's more like I want to curl up in my bed and knock out. But now that Victoria's brought it up, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty curious as to how they'll look on me too. After a good two minutes of considering my options, now that there were many in the first place, I force myself to bounce on my feet, holding the clothing and all. I stretch first. Clothing fisted in my hands and re resigned myself to the fate of trying them on. The jeans go first, obviously. Then there's the shirt, and lastly the cardigan. No matter what Victoria said, they're actually not wrinkled as she probably think they'd be. I know how to handle stuff well too, sometimes. As soon as everything's on, I step in front of the mirror and check myself out. Yay, she's so cute! Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> When I put them on, it's kind of painfully apparent that this isn't my usual style, which is probably the point. But I generally look shocked how good they look on me. It's not that I think my other clothes don't look great, because they do, it's just that these are so different, and Victoria wasn't wrong when she said they fit great together. It's weird because I don't feel out of place or anything in them. I feel like maybe I should, instead, they're comfortable. A different kind of comfortable than my dear shirt and jeans, but still comfortable. I tuck the lock of my hair behind my ear, ducking my head down a little and smiling sheepishly at myself. It's only when I hear the little buzz from my phone that I remember I should probably text Victoria back. I take a few seconds to step back to my bed sitting down while my hand 
while one hand picks up my jeans. I unlock my phone with the other. Max? I'm here! And, um, they fit well. Good, what a relief. I'm not sure how to respond with that, but luckily Victoria sends something again, so I don't have to. How do they look? They look really good. Define really good. Um, they're really color coordinated? Oh god. Okay, Scratcha, Jesus, I'll save you the effort. Just put those stupid selfie taking skills to use. She wants pictures of the bay. That's what she wants. <laughs> Takes my brain a total five seconds to catch up what Victoria said, and when it registers, I swear I almost choke on my own spit. Wait, you want me to take a picture? It shouldn't be that hard for you. Seriously, it's not. I just, you know, wasn't expecting it. Well, I'm asking you now. Put yourself to some use already. Can't help but bite down my lips. Suddenly a little nervous. Victoria wanting a selfie of me sounds so ridiculous. Oh my god. Fuck my selfie. Oh <laughs> god, these instruments are great, but oh my god. This is getting so intense. Except it actually happening, and even though I'm nervous, I think, I think I really like to show her. Okay, okay, give me a second. Ten minutes. Or is that not enough for a perfect angle? Real funny, Victoria. I turn on my phone's camera and hop off the bed for a second time. I can never get comfortable for too long, I guess. I'm in front of the mirror again. Without t thinking, I lift my hand up to fix my hair. I suddenly feel a lot less cute than I did before, and a lot more self-conscious. Before I can overthink, I position the camera phone in front of me and take in enough selfies in front of the mirror to get it right, I think. I take the picture, or two pictures. Or three or four. Oh my gosh, she's taking so many pictures so she can see like which one is the best to send to Victoria. Oh. Either way, as soon as I snap them all, I force myself to head back to my bed, throwing myself onto a little huff. It takes me a good minute to pick out the pick out of the four that looks decent. I rub my sweaty hands against the, my jeans, frowning. I shouldn't be so nervous, seriously, but I can't help it. I hope Victoria thinks it looks good. As soon as I pick one, my thumb hovers over uncertainly over the scent button for a split second until I force it down. I rest my phone on my chest and breathe out softly, closing my eyes. It feels like a few minutes have passed by, but I can't really tell. I also really don't want to know. It's only when my phone vibrates and I feel another sense of dread, and I nudge my phone with my thumb, licking my lips and shaking my head. I unlock my phone. Uh oh, she's dotting. What does this mean? You look good. <gasps> Blinking at the screen, I realize that I released a breath I didn't know I was holding. You think? I knew you would. Even you could pull off that look. I'm surprised by now my heart jumps at that, and I immediately roll over to my side and shake my head. Oh my god, chill out, Max. Oh my god. All right, all right, I'm okay. I don't even get why I'm freaking out so much. I run my fingers through my hair. Thanks, Victoria. From, for, um, everything. Like, you know. Another period of silence go by. I wonder if she's thinking of the ways to scold me for thanking her again. I told you not to worry about it. We should get some sleep or something. I don't want her to drag a sleeper deprived corpse around tomorrow. I guess you're right. I tap my fingers against the screen, wondering if I should bid her good night first. It usually wouldn't be a big deal, but suddenly it feels like it is. Okay. Good night, Max. Night, Victoria. Sleep well. While I'm sitting up to get dressed in my way more comfortable clothing, I see another text box appear on my screen. I will. You too, Max. Oh my god! <laughs> I spend more time staring at my last text message than I should. <gasps> Oh my god, how would you be able to sleep like that? Oh my god, okay. I need to calm down. Alright, alright. I'm gonna end the episode here, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this so far. Chase Field is intensifying, you guys. It's getting so gay. Oh my goodness. Okay, remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think about Victoria's route so far. This is getting so interesting. Props to, to the developers for writing this, because this is awesome. Like, you got, like, how Victoria is. Like, her... Uh, personality and everything so it's really it's really interesting to see but oh my god Pr price field i'm sorry i'm gonna have to like put you on hold for a second but chase field is just like i'm joining the ship everybody i want you to know this <laughs> right now anyway i'll see you guys in the next video bye